In this video, we'll take a look at our discrete probability distributions utilizing R to calculate. Uh, again, what we're going to be taking a look at here is our binomial. We'll be taking a look at our Poisson, and we'll take a look at how exactly we're going to graph these, create the bar chart for each one, given the distribution that arises. So let's take a look at that here. So here we have our binomial question, right? This is a like Goldstream to Parksville, 42 traffic lights on the way. What's the probability that we hit 5, 10, 12 traffic lights kind of idea? What we're going to look at is how we can quickly solve a question like this using R. So, okay, I have that question up there on the top. If you want to read through it, just the same kind of ideas we already worked through by hand. What we want to utilize in this case here is we're going to use our binomial to solve this guy. We're looking for X successes and 42 trials, 42 traffic lights. So what we can do if we wanted to, we could update things, right? We could say, hey, N equals N arrow to classify it. N is 42. And we see that pops up there. That stores us. That means we don't have to put in 42 each time. We can just write N and it knows, hey, I'm going to pull that value. I'm going to put in P. P is going to be 0 0.20. And again, right, if we miss this, it's control enter to get our code to pop from our notebook here down into our console. So as I'm running through this, as I'm getting it to pop out, control enter actually, actually executes our code. Okay, now that I have N, now that I have P, what I'm going to want to do is calculate my probability. That is, I'm going to want to get my frequency table for all the possible outcomes, probability of zero, probability of one, two, on and on and on. And what we're gonna to use to call that forward is D binome. Right, as soon as we start writing it, it pops up. We can hit tab to activate it. And it says here, hey, what things do you wanna put in? Again, if you forget, oh, what are my possible commands? We can hit tab again, and it will pop up. Hey, X, okay, X, well, zero. Comma. Well, what's my next one? Size. Okay, size. I could write 42 or I could just call forward what I've already saved as my size is N, comma. Probability. Again, I could write 0 0.2 or call forward P. From this point here, I can execute this, control enter, and it gives me my probability 8.507. Na, 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 na. Okay, I don't really want this rounded to that many. So what I can do is I can execute around this function. I can put in, let's highlight this and put some brackets around it. And then I can go, hey, let's round this. And that's gonna be round X to how many digits? So X is that thing that I just calculated. Put a comma underneath it and I want it rounded to four. So if I hit control enter now, we get, okay, it's still giving me my scientific notation, one to the negative four. Okay, let's try dropping this down a bit. Let's do it to three. There we go, round to three, it's just saying it's zero. Great, thank you for that. All right, it's not gonna display at all if there's nothing actually of interest there. So, okay, cool, we got that for our first value. Our first value is zero. But what if we want, you know, all 42. Do we have to just run this code 42 times? No, no, there's actually a bit of an easier way to do it. What we can do is we can create a variable. I'm gonna call it capital X. And that guy there is going to be, I'll introduce a new code here, SEQ for sequence. And I want a sequence of numbers from zero comma to 42. And I'm gonna count by one. So if I execute that, we see that, okay, here's X, zero, one, two, three, four. Great, that's all my ones here. Go over here, let's update this. Instead of zero, make it big X, hit enter, and there we go. We get all of our probabilities. Cool, that uh, doesn't really look very nice though, right? That doesn't look very nice. It's not really a good frequency table. So let's go and create an actual frequency table. Let's go and well, okay, what did we just calculate? Let's save this. I'm going to save this as px, right? What I just calculated, that was my probability of x. So rather than just displaying it, let's save it as a bunch of numbers, right? I can always pull it forward again. 
px, and it pops up yet again as all the probabilities. So let's create a frequency table. I'll call it frequency.table. And what it's gonna be is we wanna create what is known as a data frame. And I'm gonna put in my values. So first I want my value of x, and x is gonna equal capital X. Then I'm gonna put in um, my probability, which is gonna equal px. From here, we just need to execute. Now, okay, we have a frequency table, but nothing popped up because we just saved it right away. If we wanna see what it looks like, we can call frequency table, hit enter, and we get displaying here my values of x, that's just the sequence from zero to 42, and the corresponding probabilities. And I can look through everything in this kind of way. Getting the probabilities, getting the likelihood of the different parts happening. Great, so we have our frequency table. We can work out based off of this, then hey, what's the probability that different events happen, right? So what is the probability that x equals five? Well, to get the probability that x equals five, I could just call my frequency table. And this is kind of the nice bit with it. I can just go square brackets, put a comma in between. First bit on here is referring to the rows. After the comma is referring to the column. So I want the column, I want the probability. And the way that I have it up, I want the probability that x is five. So what I've just told it to do is I've said, okay, I want the probability of row five. Oh, right, keep in mind what we've done here. X is four in row five. So we need to be careful about that. We want the probability when X is five. So that's gonna be row six. So we have our probability as well. From here, if we wanted to get our frequency or sorry, we have our frequency table. From here, if we wanted to get our bar chart, well, what we'd have to do is we'd have to call forward our graphics package. So we would want to call forward from our library, ggplot2. This should already be installed from a previous time. If it's saying, hey, not installed, you'll have to go install packages, ggplot2, and it will install. I don't want it to restart, so I'm just going to hit cancel. But should have had this installed from a previous one, so I'm just going to comment out that line, and we just have our library. Okay, to actually get our bar chart going, we're going to go ggplot. We then want to create a plot from our frequency table, and what we're going to use in this case here is geome column, and that's because we want to use the columns for the bar chart, the geome bar, Geom bar, it goes and like takes a look through and says, okay, how many times do we have red? Or how many times do we have this number occurring? Okay, that's gonna be the height. Geom column, geom call, what it does is it goes back to our frequency table here and it says, okay, for this value of X, we're gonna have a height of 0 0.005. For this value of X, we're gonna have a height of 0.145, on and on and on and on. So geom call is what we're gonna to wanna to utilize. And in geom call, we're going to use the aesthetics. X is going to be equal to the name on my frequency table. So I just named it X. And then my Y is going to be equal to probability. Hit control enter. We have graph popping up here. That looks pretty good. If we wanted to, right, we see that, okay, really all of our observations end by 20. We can update things a little bit. We can go plus and we can go X limb. And we can say, okay, we want a limit of zero to 20. Hit enter with that again, and it updates it. It cuts off our graph, it truncates it at zero, which was fine, we had nothing below zero. And at 20, nothing above 20. So we get kind of a more zoomed in focused bit of it. We might want to give things some labels, right? I'm happy with my Y label of probability, but maybe I want to change my X label. I could use X lab for that. And my label for that is going to be number of red lights. Hit control enter. And we see that it updates. Great. 
We see these warning messages saying, hey, you've cut out a whole bunch. That's just saying it's not displaying. That's fine. All these values were zero, right? The warning message is popping up to be like, hey, alert. But okay, we're okay without it. Last thing I might want to include, right? We have to go plus. We're adding other things to this graph. I will want to include a title. So in this case here, my title is going to be the probability distribution of the, and here's a nice little trick. If I, oh, distribution of the, if I want to cut lines, right? Because this will just, it won't wrap the text. I'll just keep making a long line that keeps going of text. We want to go backslash n. Backslash n, that's kind of the code to pop up in there to say, hey, start a new line. And then this is the funny part, right? You'd think, okay, space, and then start writing. If you do that, well, let's go try, try to look, probably the distribution of the number of red lights on highway. Let's hit control enter. You notice that, hey, our second line's now indented that tiny little space. That there is that right after that N, it immediately jumped to the new line. So if we just go backslash N and then number without any space and it, it looks odd in the text. But if we activate that, we'll see that it's entirely left justified. And we have our probability distribution. So how we can use the binomial and get our results and then very similarly graph those results. Moving on then, we have our Poisson. So our Poisson, here we have the number of power outages in a year. And keep in mind that, well, what we have is Poisson average over time. We need to make sure, okay, if we have 1.8 per year, well, am I interested in, hey, what's the probability that I get one power outage per year? Or what if I was saying, hey, what's the probability of one power outage per week, right? It's proportional. So just because I get an average of 1.8 per year, I need to make sure that the X's I'm looking for are over that same interval of time and space. In this case, we'll pretend that we are, we're good, and we can carry on. We need to be a little bit careful now, though. We've jumped over to a new sheet. If I want to utilize a lot of the same names, right, good kind of practice would be to update my names. But even though I've switched sheets, I still have the same variable showing up in my global environment here. So two options, I can either come up with a new naming convention here, or might as well in our case here just to start fresh. So to start fresh, I'm just gonna come up here, the little broom, sweep this away. Let's clear our workspace. Yes, there we go. My environment is now empty. From here, what we wanna do is we wanna put in kind of the values we know. So for Poisson distribution, we don't have a number that we're interested in. All that we have is the mean r lambda. And so I'm going to say lambda is equal to 1.8. And there we go. It pops up there as my value that I can then later call. For my x values, right, so the possible number of outages that I have in a year, that's what x is. What I'm going to want to do is, again, I'm going to want to create a sequence here. I'm going to start at possibility of zero sequences. And then keep in mind, I don't have some n number of trials to logically stop at. What we kind of need to take a look at is say, okay, well, on average, I'm going to have 1.8. That's where the bulk of my likelihood is going to fall. I'm going to pick some value, maybe like 12 as an upper limit, and see if my probabilities peter off to zero by the time I get there. If I find, hey, 12 still has a significant probability, well, I should probably make my maximum value a little bit farther out. And so, okay, I want a sequence of numbers from 0 to 12, and I want it to count by 1. So run that, and I get 13 numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay, now I want to get my probability of x. Probability of x, this is going to be d plus song, right? And it pops up there, so we can hit tab. Again, if we want to go, hey, what's inside these brackets? What is my call? Hit that, we have x. Okay, my x is going to be x. I want the sequence of numbers from 0 to 12. Comma, let's hit tab. What's my next one? Lambda. Okay, my lambda is, well, lambda. If I hit that, 
Okay, it just saves it, just writes it into these values up here. If I want to actually call it forward, let's use P of X. And we see it going on there. Oh, we have it to all of these values again. Well, let's fix that. All right, we can go. Okay, I want to take this value of P of X and I want to round it. Round. X equals all of those probabilities I just calculated. Jump to my end and I want to round it to, let's say, 3 again. Hit Control Enter. Let's take a look at it again. And there we go. Oh, we see we actually pop off fairly quickly here. This is observation 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. I could probably stop this a bit sooner. Let's just update it all. 10. And there we go. Shorten it down a bit. We don't need all these zeros at the end. Okay. So we have our X. We have our probability of things occurring. Let's go and create that frequency table again. Keeping in mind that frequency table is a data frame where I'm going to have, I'm going to go outages equals X. I'll give it a different name this time, right? That's what my X variable is measuring, the number of outages that I could witness. And then I'm going to have probability equal to P of X. Hit control enter. Let's take a look at our frequency table and we get our listing of our possible probabilities. Very similarly, right, I could go, hey, what's the probability that X equals 5? And probability that X equals 5, I could look it up. I could say, okay, where is X equals 5? Five? 5 outages, 0.26. So 0 0.026, sorry, 2.6%. I could also, again, I could pull that forward as frequency table, square brackets, and outages of 5. That's going to be row 6. And I want the probability. And there we go. It's called forward to me. So I could get that as well. I could even, yeah, we don't need to get into that. So we can pull forward our values there, either look them up or call them forward. Now, if we want to graph this guy, okay, we still have this guy here from the red lights. Let's just sweep that away. There we go. And if I want to go this, again, if we don't have it already activated, we would have to pull our ggplot into our active library. And then we're just going to go ggplot of our frequency table. Table. We're going to take a look at the column. And we want aesthetics of x. Well, my x variable is my number of outages. My Y variable is my probability, right? Keep in mind, I'm just calling forward the names that I gave in my frequency table. And if I run that guy, kabam, I get my bar chart. I'm happy in this case, right? Because I pre-named my Y and my X variable. I'm happy with those. Ah, maybe I might want to update my X variable. So the X variable, maybe I'll go number of power outages per year. There we go, right? Maybe, maybe that's a bit more informative for this graph to be able to stand alone. Give it a title as well. Let's go GG title. And this one here is gonna be probability distribution of the, I'm gonna cut the line there again, of the number of power outages per year. There we go. And I have my Poisson distribution. I worked out my probabilities. I got my frequency table. I got my bar chart. Not so bad. Fairly straightforward. Again, if you wanted to save this, I could go GG save and give it a name such as, um, sorry, hitting the wrong button. Uh, I could save it as, say, Poisson.png. And let's see what happens here. It saves it. Here's the interesting bit though, because I never actually specified a working directory up at the start when I first went through this, right? We never said set working directory, set working directory, right? Keep in mind back here, this was one of the first things we did. This was our last one we were dealing with quantitative data. First thing we did was set working directory. Uh-oh, right? We didn't set the working directory in this case. So where did this save it? Uh, 
even though we're not actually doing anything to save or to work or to upload, it's still kind of often good to set that working directory so you can save things. In that case there, well, I can go to files and I can look for it. That's going to be quite, uh, quite exhaustive. I can also alternatively, instead of going GG save, I can go click on this export button and I can go save it as an image or I can just copy it and then paste it into a Word document or something like that. If I go save it as an image, I can now go and find where I want to save it and go from there. So we can go through things in this way too. Okay, so that's our binomial, that's our Poisson, that's how we can visualize this in R. That does us for today for this. Till next time.